Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. We have Tommy the Medic back again. You may have seen her in a previous video, maybe wearing the same clothes, maybe in the same setting, maybe I was also wearing the same clothes. We're just gonna pretend that those two videos were not filmed right after yeah, each other. It's a different day now. Completely different day, different time. <laughs> so we thought we'd chat a little bit about our elective and elective experiences. You guys know I went to Grenada, had the time of my life, was having a hot girl summer. Uh, Tommy was also in the Caribbean. I want to be a psychiatrist. And, That's and a I'm... great opening line. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a psychiatrist. Um, so I've always had a passion for psychiatry. So I was like, well, we have six weeks opportunity. Uh -huh. Like, this is the best time to explore my passion in psychiatry. So I did two weeks forensic psychiatry um, in Belfast, and that was just amazing. Um, I'm very into, like, crime and, like, the minds of, like, criminals. The and, crime like, dramas that you watch. Yeah, and, like, murderers and uh -huh. stuff like that. Um, so for me, like, to have um, mental health plus the law side of things merge into one in forensic psychiatry i was like we don't do this in our curriculum so exactly. let me go and like actually learn more about it and i found it so interesting um like going to tribunals going to prisons find like trying to um work out why somebody has done something even though they had um, a mental disorder like at that time it was all very interesting so that was for two weeks and then i jetted off Ooh. to um Barbados. Um, so, oh gosh, to organise, <laughs> oh lord, to organise this elective in Barbados was it was it was quite a long one. Not gonna lie, um, I think we had decided in November. Yeah, you had that, decided earlier. Yeah, on. That, that's where we wanted to go. Um, so it was me and my other two friends. Mm -hmm. um, that when we contacted the hospital. Um, went through all the process because you have to send them like you have to do an application form first of all then you have to pay an application fee of one hundred dollars and then US what dollars? it was one hundred yeah US dollars but the thing is like it was actually difficult for like if you have Barclays don't even bother because <laughs> I was like how do you send them dollars because like, like it was so long they sent us like this account details of where we needed to send this money mm -hmm. But like my Barclays app just it wouldn't let me send the money. Obviously, because it thinks you're being scammed. It, it kept taking four pounds from me. <laughs> every, I tried to send this money three times, and every time Barclays would take four pounds from me for trying to send send this money. But one of my other friends, um, her bank actually allowed her to send oh, the money. Okay. So then I just sent my money through yeah. her. But I think because I was trying to do it through the app, maybe that's why it was worth. It was a, being a bit weird mm -hmm. but if you go in branch then it's probably easier but then again you have to pay like 25 pounds to be able to send this money in branch wow. that's why i was trying to do it through the app also how yeah. did you know that you're sending the money to an actual person as opposed to like sending to you it was um, some some scam situation because the administrator that we have been talking to from barbados she was the one that sent us this account and how did details. you know that she was the real administrator for the hospital basically that's um, my question oh because like she had like you know when they have like their name, it their title, legit. um, like their phone number. She had like every time she, they've got like you know the stamp of like the hospital at yes. the bottom of the email and like the different little like yeah. writing thingy. And did you guys yeah. just find them online? So on their website they have an application form. So you fill out the application form and then it also has a list of specialties. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to click like three specialties, like possible options. But then there's also a little like text box. I wrote in there. I would really prefer psychiatry. Because that's literally the that's only one that I wanted. wanted. I think I fit like psychiatry, um, GM, and I think family medicine or something like that. But I only wanted psychiatry, so I just told them that mm -hmm. right off the bat. Um, and then um, we didn't hear back for ages, so we had to do. I think we had to do the application form twice or three times actually, because it just wasn't working. They weren't getting back. But eventually, it got back to us with our different like specialties and we got accepted into them so that was all fine then we had to send like our occupational health mm -hmm. um stuff and some other little forms that we had to fill out uh, but it was all quite smooth process really just kept going back and forth through email um all the forms that, to, that we had to fill out we sent via like um, a courier from like just like physical physically oh, okay. sending yes, yeah. okay. from here to, to them, them. Mm -hmm. um and then so i got there 
on the Friday and our elective space to start on the Monday. So when I got there, um, we had this lovely B and B. Um, like, and how did you book your accommodation? So we. It was actually one of my friends that booked the accommodation just via Airbnb. It was on the online. Yeah, that's yeah, fair enough. Yeah. It was online via Airbnb. We didn't go through like Medics Away or any other like elective companies. No, you guys we, did We everything. just organised everything ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so we found the Airbnb, and the Airbnb was lovely. Like the apartment was so beautiful. Um, one thing that I do have to say is Barbados is expensive. So yes. I think all in all, I probably spent around four thousand mm-hmm. pounds um so that included the flights the accommodation the tuition fee to the hospital oh yeah i forgot to mention that and how much was that? um so that came up to like around 700 pounds okay for the four weeks okay. so it depends um, on how many weeks you're spending but i think it's, it was 200 dollars per, per week, week. Mm-hmm. so if you want to spend two weeks then it'll be 400 us mm-hmm. dollars so yeah it depends on how many weeks you um you're You're gonna spend there so we spent four weeks so that's why it was 700 pounds um so the airbnb was lovely we had um two great hosts um it was an apartment of like i think it was eight apartments all together Mm -hmm. um and they actually lived in one of the apartments this married couple they were just so lovely um but the one thing about this apartment was um the it was 30 minutes away from the bus stop (laughs) So we had to walk 30 minutes in the scorching hot sun to get to every bus day stop. to get to the bus stop. Stop it. But there actually was a bus that used to come, but it would come like once a day. So we couldn't really rely on that bus. So can we just I, had to can walk. I, can, can we? 30 minutes from the bus stop. <laughs> yeah. So you need that. Yeah, it was, it was long. Like, I was supposed to lose weight, but that didn't really happen because I was eating a lot of food do you know but the heat makes you hungry <laughs> oh honestly I came, I came and do you know do you know how like it was so hot that like each of us would have like um bottle of like ice cold water mm-hmm. on this walk by the time we got to the bus stop the water it been a melt it was <laughs> melt head it like was lukewarm. it was lukewarm it was absolutely crazy um so when we got to the bus stop we would then take a bus mm-hmm. um the good the good bus that would always drive us to the hospital yeah but on this bus we had so much we had so much fun on the buses the that we music. used to take the soca music yeah. and actually sometimes like i love my afro beats so they'll play a little whiskey yeah. they'll play a little david doe here and there they, they, they love yeah. david doe mm-hmm. like the caribbeans love up our mm-hmm. um afro beats mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm all here for it <laughs> so we'll take it to the hospital so that was like another maybe like half an hour on this bus so That's all okay. together our journey was an hour to get to this hospital and we got there on our first day and i was greeted by one of the reps um she was really lovely showed me around the hospital um showed me like the library and stuff like that which i wasn't gonna need but anyways she was really lovely um and then that started off my electives in psychiatry i went to the clinics mm-hmm. i went to the general hospital which actually had a psych ward but then i also went to the actual psychiatric hospital mm-hmm. um and just comparing um the general hospital to like hospitals back here yeah there was a lack of like resources i mean on a psychiatry ward you wouldn't necessarily see like you know um like o2 like monitoring equipment Mm -hmm. or like oxygen on the wall or anything like that because it is a psych ward Mm -hmm. most of them don't actually have medical medical conditions it's just their psychiatric condition but it was quite an eye-opener to me and a bit of a a shock to my system when i walked into the ward and there was literally like 20 beds just like in a row Mm -hmm. like 10 in a row here 10 in a row here they were like facing opposite each other Mm -hmm. there wasn't any drapes it wasn't anything like that it was literally just like these metal beds mm. and like single like thin mattress just facing each other mm-hmm. and there was actually only ever like two patients on the ward at a time okay. i didn't see no more than like two patients and i just think that's all d- due to the stigma yeah there just needs to be a lot more awareness mm-hmm. um about mental health um disorders within the black community and i think that's why i'm extra passionate about doing mm-hmm. psychiatry so that I can influence my um, people and my culture and also take it back home to Nigeria where I'm originally from mm-hmm. um, because there's a lot of mental health issues there as well and people just tend to just brush it under the carpet. So yeah, um, it was a shock to my system. 
Um, but it was also interesting to see that it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, doesn't matter what background you are, you could be the richest person on the earth, you could be the poorest person on the earth. Mental health issues doesn't discriminate. Yep. There was people there with schizophrenia, people there with depression, people there with bipolar, people having um, hallucinations, psychosis, and that's exactly the same as here. Yeah. So the actual kind of clinical presentations of the psychiatric disorder doesn't change because of your location. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same um, kind of um, symptoms that people have. Um, so I found that quite disheartening in that if you were back in the UK with me, like there will definitely be more help yeah. and more rehabilitation services. So even things like um, like home treatment or being in a building where um, it's kind of like home, yeah. um, you've got your own room, um, like you've got meals, a supported type living type of thing. They don't have that there, so it's, it's either the hospital or they're on the streets. So um, a lot of the time, like the families do want to help them, but because of what other people m might talk about their family member, what other people might say, a lot of the time they kind of just do leave them in the hospital, but they do like go and visit. So it was very interesting just to compare to the, the two between. different and healthcare like systems. That's the point of an elective to see a healthcare system in a different place versus at home. Yeah. Would you recommend an elective to Barbados for some? Obviously, for someone that wants to go there, that's interested, not necessarily in sight, yeah. but just in general. Um, would yeah, you I would. It? I would recommend it. Um, aside from going to the hospital um, and actually having that clinical experience, it wasn't too much as well. Like I, I went in a couple of times a week. It wasn't like I was there like every single day. Um, but again, it depends on I guess what you the specialty well, that yeah. you're doing and how intense you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But we also had time to explore the island we did so many fun things we went on boat cruises we went to beaches they have gorgeous beaches yeah. we even went up to the north um on a road trip one day and just to see the comparison between the south of the island is very like flat and it's very like beachy like they have one of like the most beautiful beaches in the world and the, the top of the island is like more valleys and like yeah. mountains green. and more green and it was just a bit it was like, am I in a different country? <laughs> um, we made sure that we stayed for carnival, so we got to see Rihanna, which was mm -hmm. really fun. Oh yeah, this is the thing. You're probably thinking, oh, why are you taking bus everywhere? We had to take the bus. Yeah. Because let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not for the faint hearted. Um, no, Barbados is expensive. So expensive. Expensive. <laughs> like. Groceries, like you're shopping for your groceries. It's not. The food has to be imported, so the cost of importing the food plus the cost of the food itself. I'm not gonna lie, strawberries were like six pounds. Six pounds, mate, when I can go down, don't know, I can go down my local shop go and to it's, Tesco. it's one pound, yeah. it's two pound maximum. There it was six pounds, like granola was seven pound. Yeah. Like, no, People it People was... think they're going to like, <laughs> A, a middle income country so things are going to be cheaper no, no. Grenada was the same it's, no it's not cheap no it's... like it was hurting my spirit half the time like just for us to cook like I was just like why is it like I literally spent most of my money on food I yep. would say I spent I think roughly around like 1,300 ish on like just actual spending which included my social life which included mm -hmm. food and activities and most of that went to food. Yeah. Like the food was so expensive. Even like the restaurants, we'll go to like um like a beach shack. A little beach a hut. Beach, a little beach hut mm -hmm. or um bar. And like why is the starter ten pounds? Why is the starter fourteen pounds? Mm -hmm. Fourteen pounds for a starter? Yeah. Like, no. But you just have to budget, I think, and you just have to try and like spread out your money yeah, accordingly be... but i would say because i was there for five weeks and five weeks is a very long, time. A long time so i would advise probably go for two three weeks and then like you'll be fine yeah by the end of it i was literally crying yeah no financially it's not it's not a joke it's actually not a joke before you go whoever you're going with just make yeah. sure you are all in understanding this is my budget yes feel free to go out and enjoy the same restaurant as lewis hamilton i might miss that one but mm -hmm. i'll join you for mm -hmm. this one that we can both do yeah. you know just have an understanding yeah. with who you're going with or you know so i would think i would say just make sure you budget um correctly because you don't want to be stranded anywhere mm -hmm. um obviously you've always got family to fall back on but um yeah just budget 
appropriately um, for however many weeks you're, you're staying there to. for. Um, and don't book anything online before you go there. So for example, like cruises or like boat parties or like beach parties, just don't put them online because there. you're gonna find better deals when you're there. Yeah. And probably more events will come up yeah. when you're actually there. Yeah. Um, Cause when we were there, it was like a couple of weeks before crop over. So loads of events were like coming up um, whilst we were there. So I would say definitely just wait until you get there. Um, and yeah. And then book when you're there. Uh, interesting actually, from what you said, 4,000 pounds and you organized it yourself. You yes. didn't spend that much different on elective, which I think is a, is a bit shock, you know, it's like, a bit shocking. I went with Medics Away, 1,700 just to Medics Away, as in that paid for accommodation and the placement, and then the rest was for flights. And my, I think my flights were a little bit cheaper than yours, so I booked a little bit before you. Yeah, but mine overall was we spent a similar a similar amount. Eight hundred and twenty three pounds, but I booked mine. I think in February or March. Late, yeah, I booked, and that was for a flight in July. So. What, and four months before also the fact that you you were staying for crop like you stayed a week longer than i did you were staying for crop over whereas we left just before carnival season started mm. so i think that's why maybe yours was a little bit more as in the money i spent for medics away then it equaled out because you stayed a little bit longer yeah. also got to enjoy carnival yeah. and also partied with rihanna i mean that <laughs> there's levels that was it there's was levels. it was really the highlight of my trip <laughs> hey. Come on. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, I would say budget for your elective. It's expensive. Book yeah, early, yeah. decide early. Don't leave unless you're just going to stay. And you don't have to be abroad for the whole time. I don't oh, know yes. if other unis do the same, but most people I know from our uni, two weeks at home, four weeks away. Yeah. You could do three weeks at home, three weeks away. Yeah. You don't have to be away the whole time. Yeah. So, you know think about don't go broke for yeah, a summer or don't go fun. broke um and i would say also look up bursaries because mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure your own university will have some sort of bursaries um lists that they will share with yep. you um because our uni did so i applied to a couple of them even though some of them i was a bit like oh i missed that because <laughs> i was looking at them in like december and the, the date was, was like gone. in october so i feel like as soon as you know you get into um depending on when your electives are whether it's at the end of fifth year or at the end of fourth year yeah. to start researching early i would say is very important so mm -hmm. you're not left in like may to be trying to sort things out because i think we was everything was done and dusted by march for us yeah. like flights booked accommodation booked all our like um, paperwork had been sent like mm -hmm. everything was just you could just focus on your exams and kind of relax because you don't um, want to be worrying about elective when exams are coming up in yeah. two months and you're like, but I need to book this. The For us, the people that, a lot of people, I would say at least 20 people going to Sri Lanka in our year. And it just so happened that um, the, the attacks that happened mm -hmm. over Easter and stuff, mm -hmm. and the uni said, nope, you are not going there for elective. So I know the stress that those people went mm -hmm. through trying to arrange another one. So don't voluntarily leave it too late for yourself, you know, if you yeah. know what I mean. So organize early. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. yes.